Hello, welcome back to the Ear Wiggle. Today I'm going to show you how I blow dry cats or one method that you can use. So the first thing I want to show you real quick is the hair dryer. It really doesn't matter what kind you use as long as it has a way to adjust the temperature. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but mine has hot, warm, and cool. A lot of hair dryers only have a hot and cool option. If it does, you want to make sure that it's on cool. Mine has a warm option and I use it in a certain way and I'll show you. You just want to make sure that the cat is not getting hot. You need to either hold this far enough away to where the warm air <clears throat> feels warm to them and not hot or um, you need to do, you know, use something in front of it to kind of diffuse the heat a little bit. And I'll show you what you can do. If you're blow drying your cat and your hand starts to feel warm from the heat, the cat, you know, like too warm, the cat's uncomfortable too. So keep that in mind. Um, and you don't want to do this for very long. If you do the cool air, it's basically going to blow room temperature air on the cat. And that's completely fine also. It's a little bit cold in here today. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and use the warm. I don't want to be blowing cold air on them. And then here we have off, low, and medium. Or excuse me, I apologize. Off, low, and high. And that's for the air speed. And most of the time, low is going to be all you need. Um, if you have somebody who can hold the hair dryer for you that's option that's that's optimal somebody who can just kind of stand there and hold it if not you can actually get hair dryer stands where you can put this in a stand and it'll hold it and you can like angle it but not everybody has one of those and they're kind of expensive and really all you need is something and you can set this on that's not going to be affected by the heat so i'm going to show you what i'm going to do i have a silicone heat pad like this is this is what you would like put on your table and then put like your hot food that you got off the stove like the pot you set it on here so what I do is I take some towels and what I've done is I've rolled these up and this lifts it up off the table a little bit and then I will set this down to protect the towels from the heat most of the time this is not necessary this is kind of just being overly cautious but since you guys might try what I do I don't want you setting fire to your towels or something um also the the intake for this is on the back do not block the intake because you'll overheat your hair dryer. Um, <clears throat> find out where the intake is on yours and just be really careful that you don't block it. And if this ever starts to feel hot right here because it's laying down on something, if this ever starts to feel hot, then um, you need to turn it off or put it on to cool. So that's the first thing. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is this. This is called a happy hoodie. And basically it's just like a, it's almost like a thick, like a piece of a sleeve or something. And what I do with this is when I blow dry the cats, I'll put this over their head around their ears. They, they can see through it. So, um, I'll fold it over, like fold it in half on a kitten. Let me just fold it real quick. So it's a little bit smaller and all this does is keep the air out of their ears. Cause a lot of times that's what they don't like. They don't like this in their face. They don't like it in their ears. And this way they can see, and it's not scary to them. Um, some cats will tolerate it, some won't. If your cat doesn't like it, then, you know, you don't have to use it. This is just one option. You can also just take a sock and cut the end off of it and then fold it over so it's a little bit, you know, thicker. Um, and as long as the, the sock is elastic, that might work if you don't have one of these. Um, you always want some kind of a treat to give them after the blow dry so that they understand this is a positive experience. And before you do the bath, always trim their nails with some, some sort of cat nail trimmers. Because you don't want to get, you don't want to risk getting clawed or scratched while they are being bathed. And you always want to brush the cat out first. This will make the bath go faster. And because, you know, there'll be less to wash. And um, if the cat, like if the cat's got food stuck to him or if he soiled himself or something, if you can get some of that out of there before the bath, it'll, it won't take as long to bathe them. Um, you'll also need one of these slicker brushes afterwards. Because somebody wrote to me asking about um, getting their cat dry. They said it took a very long time. And that can happen. So if you have a brush, a slicker brush like this, this is just one of the cheap wire slicker brushes that you can get pretty much anywhere. Um, this is really good, even if you have a short hair cat. Or you can use like a bristle brush. Um, but this this is really quick and I'll show you how to use it to make it go quick. You also want to comb the cat out afterwards, especially if they have long fur, to make sure that you didn't miss anything. And when they're all dry, you can use this. This is called an echo groomer. And you can use this to kind of brush out their fur. So this will help get out, um, especially like short hair. Well, it works on short and long hair, but 
Um, you can use it on short hair cats, especially if they have a lot of like undercoat that you want to get out. Um, and that's on top of any other brushing that you want to do. That's just a new tool that I've started using that I really like. And so I thought I'd show it to you. It works better on some cats than others. It works better on different um, coat types than others. But one of the benefits of it is that the cats, the cats really like this. They, it feels like they're getting like brushed. Like if your cat enjoys being brushed, they'll probably like this. So it's, it's, a, it's usually a positive experience for them. So I'm going to go grab something. I'll be right back. And then I will um, show you the kitten that we're, be, that we're drying today. You could angle this different ways to make it face the cat and you probably want to do this on a table or something somewhere um, steady or on the couch maybe um, and you can also do this with a cat on your lap and usually if I have only one cat to bathe I'll just sit and hold them in my lap that way I can kind of um, like hang on to them a little bit easier and also they feel a little bit more secure being held rather than just sitting on top of a table so um, it also depends on the cat and everything all right, so here's the kitten. This is Butterball again. And you guys saw me bathe her in the bathing video. And a um, couple tips too, when you go to bathe them, when you get to the face, you can use a wet washcloth or unscented baby wipe rather than, you know, getting their faces wet. And when I take them out of the tub, I will first use the towel to get their faces as dry as possible. That way the hair dryer doesn't really have to get in their face so much. Her fur is so long and really thick and dense and she also gets food all over her face that I have to really scrub and get all that out of there. She's a messy eater. She does groom herself really well but because the fur is so long she can't do a very good job so um, that's why I have to really wash her face really really good and we probably will be using the hair dryer on there and I'll show you a couple tricks like if you have to dry like back here where all this fur is you can put your thumb over their ear like this this will block the air from getting in their ear and then you can brush out their fur also their feet um she's so small that it's hard for me to like hold her foot out like this and you know brush it and dry it she's going to be putting her you know how you can see right now she's moving her head it's going to get in the air so what you can do for this is take a dry towel and rub backwards so that their fur starts to stick up when the fur sticks up like that, it'll dry faster. And you can also use like a toothbrush to backcomb the fur like this with the toothbrush. Or like I said, one of these slicker brushes you can use. Or if that's too aggressive, you can even just use a regular old like like bristle brush. And see how the fur is like sticking up like that? That will help the air circulate through there and get her feet drier. So we're going to do that first. I've already kind of dried her feet off a little bit before I turn on the camera. So um, we're just going to... Do that for the front feet and we'll do the same for the back and this will help while we're drying while the air is blowing around this will this will help her little feet dry out so that she doesn't you know we don't have to extend her legs and do all that to um, get them dry it should be basically the idea is to make this short as possible this whole grooming drying thing as short and sweet as possible and as comfortable for her as possible so to start with we're gonna see if she'll accept the happy hoodie I'll see if she'll let me use it. So here it is. Like I said, it's like a sleeve. And basically for her little face, what I do is I just fold it inside out like this so that it's folded in half. That's all I did. I'm, I don't know if that showed up. I'll do it again for you. So I'm just folding it back on itself like this. Okay. That makes it smaller because her face is so small. And then you just, you just set it over their head like this. So see, she can see, but now her ears are blocked. So the arrows are going to be blowing in her ears and bothering her. Um, so I'm, And then the next thing is with this brush, this is how this works. So here the air is coming out. It's going to be coming out of the hairdryer. She's going to be here in front of that getting dry. And what I'm going to do, hold still baby, is I'm going to take this brush and you don't want to rake through the hair. You actually want to go the other direction, backwards, and you don't want to rake. You just want to pat and lift, pat and lift. And what that's doing is it's opening up. See how the air, the fur now, hold on baby, hold on. The fur is like sticking up like this. That's going to help the air get in there and dry it. And this will also break up the little clumps of like the hair, like when it's wet, it clumps together. That's why it's taking so long to dry. So this will break up those clumps. The air can get in there and she'll just dry so much faster. So I'm going to go ahead and dry her. You won't be able to hear me talk over the sound, so I'll probably speed through this. But just remember, pat and lift. It's not a raking or brushing motion like you would think. It's just pat and lift. And you want to go the opposite direction of the hair. Because if you go this way, it's going to lay the hair down and it's going to defeat the purpose. We want this hair sticking up as much as possible. This will also make her look fluffier in the end. The hair will um, just be fluffier and, and just it'll be cute. So 
I'm going to move this back a little bit so I have a little more room to work so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, come here, baby. And she's already got the hoodie off, so let me put it back on. Come here, baby. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see if she leaves it on. Um, once the air starts going, she might want it there. If she doesn't, that's fine. She does not need it. Um, but it's just, just so that you can see how it works. I'm just going to angle this up so that it's facing her. Come on, baby. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on now. Okay, so a couple more things. Um, if you notice, I started on her back at the back end of the cat back here. You don't want to start near the front because that's going to immediately put fur, I mean not fur, um, air going in her face. Even with the hoodie on, they don't like it. So start in the back and you want to start on the top because the um, usually the water is going to be go going down. So if you start at the bottom of the cat and work your way up, you're going to be kind of blowing that water back down onto the part you just dried. So um, I like to start at the top and work my way down. And I want to show you already how dry she looks in that one spot. And if you spread the fur out and look at the skin, there should be no clumps of fur. So right here you can see a couple little like places where the fur is clumpy together. That's because it's still wet. But if we go, um, if we go like here, you, you don't see those clumps. It's all individual furs. In fact, you can barely see the, oops, sorry. Um, you can barely see the skin because it's it's been dry. So this part is dry, and you can compare it to over here where where maybe it looks dry here, but like when you spread it out, you can see the fur, the places where the fur is is clumped together because it's still wet. So I'm gonna try putting the hoodie back on her, and we're gonna continue drying and see if um see you know I'm just basically I'm gonna finish drying her. So see how it goes, baby. All right. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to mention. If you notice, this brush is going between her and the air, so it's preventing the heat from sitting on her skin for a long time. And that helps prevent her from getting burns or getting overheated. So I just wanted to point that out. That's another reason to use a brush, is it will prevent like direct hot air contact. Even though this is only on warm, it's not on hot, um, you still want to protect them and make sure they don't ever get too warm or too hot because they can. Their, their skin is very delicate and you don't want to hurt them. So, put this back on, baby. All right. So I'm going to pause here real quick and show you. See how you can tell she's like wet, the hair is kind of like stuck together, and then this side she's like a little poof ball. And you can see around like the neck here where the fur is like really fluffy and dry, and on this side where it's still kind of matted with water. Um, I also wanted to point out here when I was showing you, I put my thumb over her ear. You can also lift and kind of fold the skin over the ear and hold your thumb down. And you And I'm not like, she's not struggling. I'm not holding her and like, I'm not like, this isn't a death grip. This is just a gentle, like, I have to put my hand under there to support her chin, but see, she's not at all fighting me. So this is a, you know, she's a very calm cat. She's kind of, you know, it's ironic. It, it, we need a long haired cat to kind of show you how this can be done. But then she happens to be like calm and very accepting of this whole process. She's kind of wiggling around or whatever, but she's not actually fighting me. Um, not everybody's cat obviously is going to be this calm, especially in the beginning. But this is why you start when they're young, if you can if you have that option. Um, but this is also why it helps to have a second person to kind of help you. If you have someone who can hold the cat and then you can then put your thumb over the ear and, and brush and blow dry, that will help. And the more you do this, the calmer, usually the calmer they'll get about it. Um, every cat's different, but in my experience, they tend to at least get to a level of just acceptance, even if they never really fully enjoy it. So um, we're going to go ahead and dry the other side of her. We'll get the underside. And I just wanted to point out when you saw me holding her ear that this is like she's she's letting me do this this isn't you don't ever want to hold you, you never want to hold the cat if they're fighting and yanking back with their head don't 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 do this like 
let them go. You can towel dry their face if you have to. It's not worth hurting them. So if they start fighting you when you do this, stop. And either towel dry their face or have somebody help you something. But never never get into a tug of war with their head because you could hurt them. So um, she's literally just letting me do that. So, okay, so I'm going to go back to bow drying. Okay, so I don't know if you saw, but I over here I had to adjust the heat to a cooler setting because my uh, hair dryer was getting a little bit too warm, so I put it to cool. Um, another thing is, at this point, you can see she's about tripled in size because of all the fluff. And you, what you want to do is kind of run your hands through their fur. If you can feel any spots that feel cool to the touch, then that means that spot is still wet and you need to go back over it with a hair dryer. Right now, the only place I feel cool is in between her toes, which I will get with the towel because she wasn't really liking her feet being messed with, and back here. And I can understand she doesn't like air being blown um, around there and her little, you know, between her toe beans here. So um, I will towel dry those areas and I will brush them out. Like what I'll do is I'll towel dry and then I'll get the brush and kind of fluff up the fur and then towel dry a little more and fluff up the brush and do that over and over until she's dry. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is when you're using this, you don't want to like dig this into the skin. This should just be lightly touching the fur. This should not be scratching or or, or plucking at the skin because um, that's really uncomfortable for them. When their fur is wet, it doesn't protect them quite as well. So um, that's uncomfortable. Around here, you can she's dry. I don't feel any cool um, dampness or anything. And you can see how nice and fluffy her fur is. Look at that. And um, right here, there's a damp spot. So I'll either try going over that again or just towel dry it, but with a brush. Um, but that's, so that's that. I want to show you this. We can go to the next part, which is to comb her out. You want to take this comb and just kind of go through. She's so small. And by the way, at this point, I've only been drying her for about 10 minutes or so. So um, obviously with the, you know, with a larger cat, it's going to take a little bit longer, but with practice and time, um, you can get a pretty quick dry job, especially if the cat cooperates. And you can always stop, you know, if the cat isn't cooperating, you can stop, let them run around for a little bit, come back later and finish drying them. Don't let it go too long though. Um, and if, you, if you're trying to dry one area, like for her, it was back here. If they, if they fuss and they don't like it, stop, go to a different area until they calm down and then go back to that spot. And sometimes that, sometimes in that way you can get them done. It doesn't always work because, you know, every cat's different, but those are some tricks you can try. Okay, I'm not feeling any mats or anything. Some of the bad places for her, of course, are going to be underneath where she doesn't want me to mess with, so I'll have to do it later. But, um, you know, with cats like this, sometimes they need to have a sanitary shave where they shave the uh, fur just around their backside so that, you know, uh, when they use the bathroom, they don't get mats and soiled, get all soiled in there. Um, so I will comb through that. So already I found like a little like fluff, see? It's not much, but it's when they get older, there'll be more and more of that. Um, another really good place to check, especially before the bath, is under their chin down here because this chin and bib will get full of food sometimes. And um, and around their little paw pads because um, her feet are always kind of gross because she walks and things. And there's like these long furs that stick out. So probably what I'll do um, when she's dry is I'll do a video of, you know, cleaning out the little paw pads so that she can walk. Because another thing too is their fur will grow over her little paw pads. And then when she walks on smooth surfaces, she'll slide around and that's really irritating for them. So... Um, and then this is the, um, the Equi Groomer, and we'll just go over. I don't know if you can hear, but she's purring. This is the most easiest cat to dry ever. And uh, what you do is you just, you know, comb this over their, her, their fur. Her fur is so, um, she still has this soft, pillowy kitten fur, so this may not do anything. And also, as you saw, she didn't really care for the happy hoodie, um, so I just didn't make her wear it. She, and she was totally fine. She was fighting this the happy hoodie more than she was fighting uh, me putting my thumbs over her ears but some cats um do prefer the happy hoodie so just you know see if your cat likes it 
um, before, you know, you decide. Every cat is different. You like that baby? Yeah, she likes this. Aw, she's nuzzling me. Such a good girl. Show them how pretty you are. Yeah, you're a beautiful girl. So brave. You did a good job today. You always praise them throughout the whole entire grooming process, no matter what they're doing. You know, tell them they're doing good or whatever, because you want, like I said, this has to be a positive experience for them. You don't want them ever to, you know, to dread this more than they have to. Okay, so now she gets treats. So I'm going to open this and see if she'll, I don't, I've never given her this before, so we'll see if she likes it. You want to try? Don't put it in your fur. We just washed that. Come here. Oh, you smell it, huh? Come here. It's right here. Oh, oh, it's right there. <laughs> She's running past it. Here, baby. Here, I'll put some on my finger for you. Here. Right here, right here. There you go. Oh, oh, that's my, <laughs> I don't need the rest of my finger. Here. I should get a little dish for her but yeah so she's liking this here here you go don't get it in your face come here scoot back so they can see you there you go there you go that's better and you just give them whatever treats they like i didn't know what she would like yet so we're trying some things here you go there that's good we got it so with these you just squeeze out a little bit and uh they lick it out of the container so so she's happy. So that is how you get a cat dry with a hair dryer. That is one method. There are many. Um, this is just what I use most of the time. And uh, let me know how it goes if you try it. And just remember that, especially with older cats that aren't used to this, um, it'll take longer to get them to a point where they accept it. And also remember that uh, there are reasons for washing and drying your cat. And I talked a little bit about that in another video, but you never know. You might have a cat that maybe has a medical condition and needs to be bathed or, you know, like with this kitten where she just gets dirty because her fur is long and she, and she can't really groom herself yet. Um, and some long cat, long haired cats just never are able to fully groom themselves because there's just so much fur and, you know, anyway. So I will see you guys all next time. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon. Say bye-bye.